Don't forget we've got a vacation Bible school coming up at the end of the month, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, still sign up. She's still in the back if you want to help with vacation Bible school. Um, uh, don't forget August 8th, by a month from today, we'll have a call out singing for us. And we are still taking up items for this mission trip. We're we'll a little back, so if you want to bring something, I'll bring something. That would be appreciated. Um, any more announcements now? Emily Grace Main and Michael Ryan Stoopsbury uh, are getting married July 17, 2021 at 10 a.m. And they're at the Kingston City, will be at the Kingston City Park Pavilion in Kingston. Um, it's too late to RSVP because we just got there. So we're still at crashing like this crash the wedding, you know what I'm saying? And Emily and Michael are registered at Target and Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Um, for those of you who just prefer to give money, a basket will be available for that purpose. So don't forget that July 17th, uh, 10 a.m. There's a shower. There's a shower. Okay. How can you say I can't tell that? See, it don't say. It's pretty, though. Anyway, shower. So go, ladies, men, don't go. There it is. Oh, it says wedding shower up top. If I'd read. It says wedding shower right there, yeah. I didn't read the whole thing, I just got it. So anyway, whatever, just show up. We may go ahead and have a wedding that day. I don't care. They don't care. We'll just tell them I said so. All right, any more announcements? It's good to have Deb and Charity here somewhere. I saw them both. They're back there. Hey, Charity's heading that through one door and the other one the other. All right. It's good to have them here, so it's good to see see them. All right, uh, prayer list. Um, had to take Roy uh, Rattler to the emergency room last night. We have no more details, so he got to come home or, or they had to keep him. So uh, he's having a hard time breathing. So remember Roy and and uh, Libby. Um, keep I tried to call this morning, but I was afraid they'd be asleep, and I didn't want to call. So, yeah. So keep Roy and, and Libby in your prayers. Keep Miss Joe Smith still in your prayers. Uh, she's still at the nursing home in Farragut, uh, going to re do a rehab. Uh, Edna Cox will be uh, going to assisted living over at Jamestown um, sometime in the very near future. So don't forget that. Uh, remember Gary, as he go, keeps going through his treatments, Will. Uh, Melvin Page, uh, Mike Mann. Uh, Caleb Willis, uh, Loretta Boyd. Um, keep praying for Buster and Jimmy, uh, Jack and Mildred Morton. Uh, pray for Jim. He's still having uh, back problems. Gary Nelson, uh, Bill Edmonds. Uh, Emily and Trent. Bill Bohannon, I think is what that writing was. The B and the O and I can't read the rest. Uh, Scotty Hill. Anyone else? Is Dara doing better? No. We don't know. I guess she's doing better. Hope so. Anyone else? Did you say Billy Edmonds? Yes, I did. Billy Edmonds, yeah. Keep our uh, country in your prayers, our, our military, and our leaders. And our church. And our church, yeah. Definitely keep our church in your prayers. Anything else? I have 
Dr. D to lead us to the Lord in prayer. Birthdays, anniversaries. Any birthdays? We get lucky on Sunday. We'll get lucky. On the side All right, well, I'll write that down over there and forget to read it, but okay, I'll, it'll be here. Right? Don't tell him I told you that. <laughs> don't tell him what you told him. I won't. I'll read that too. Dorothy said don't tell him. Okay. Anyone else? Any anniversaries? Pray for traveling mercy too. I guess we got some people traveling. All right. So I have no birthdays, no anniversary, so here we are. Dr. D, what do you think? I said, what do you think? Smart move. You listen to Carol over me, I do it Albert. Yeah. I would definitely. Okay, yes, let's give it a try. Come on. We're gonna have a choir. A little bit of our quartet or something. Here comes some more. We're good. Part of it. Is uh, Little Man done, or are they still playing? No, this, they haven't even started yet. They haven't? No, Thursday and Friday. When do they play here? Thursday and Friday. Yeah. I'm going to try to get down there. Thursday, That's awesome. Thursday is at 12, mm -hmm. and the second day is at 6.30. Maybe we're going to go to the league world. <laughs>
the master of the sea, heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me the sea.
specials. I tried to come one of them early and <coughs> they wouldn't and somebody else asked him. Yeah, I'll do it. So yeah. I said uh, Tom Beatty ended up. I'll give Beatty her five dollars up for off my favor to do that for me. So uh, Dr. D's gonna come and sing one for us and then when he gets done, Karen's gonna come and sing. lost but you knew where to find me I was hungry you were bread for my soul I was thirsty and you gave I 
That's why sometimes I just want to praise you. And sometimes just to speak your name. Sometimes I just want to. Everything. 
Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. By the way, let me just wish everyone this morning a happy 4th of July. I hope that you've uh, enjoyed the weekend so far. I hope that you enjoy today as well. But this morning, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 15. And one of the reasons why I'm really excited this morning about this message is that I came in as absolutely unprepared as a person could be. Now, don't, don't mistake what I'm saying. I have spent all week long working and studying on this sermon, and nothing seemed to surface. I sat there and I dealt with this idea of freedom, this idea of liberty. I looked at this passage of scripture. I was trying to contemplate different things, and literally the, the examples that I wanted to use, the things that I thought about saying, none of that seemed to match up. And I walked in this morning and I thought, God, I don't have anything that I can share this morning unless you step up and you do it. And I said, God, you're just going to have to take care of this and you're going to have to handle it. 
I come walking in the door and I have a conversation with one of our members in the back and during that conversation, something arises and, and I'll, I'll share, share with you in just a moment part of that, that of, 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 of an, an example that, that really drives this, this, this home about, about the idea of, of, of on, on this roller coaster ride of our walk with God, and, and yet, yet at the end of the day, we see growth through all of those things. And, and then, right after, after that, we, we go through and we have our worship, we certainly have our time of singing, and then, then Miss Karen gets, gets up and she talks about this trial, this, this trouble, this, this problem, that, that is, is intended the whole way through to be a blessing. Boy, did that unload all the things that God wants for us to hear this morning. And you're going to understand why I'm so excited this morning as these two things occurred as I've come into this building. But in, in uh, Exodus chapter 15, we're going to skip around just a little bit. We'll stay in the chapter of Exodus 15, but we're going to skip around just a little bit with some verses to drive these points home. But if you would, would you stand with me? And we're going to begin reading with verse 1. Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. The Bible says, Then sang Moses, by the way, just to give you a heads up, this is them right after they crossed the Red Sea, and Pharaoh's army is destroyed and killed in, in, in the waters, and so then they're on the other side of the bank, and here's what they say. They, or here's what they, sing. they sing, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will send unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed, Gloriously, the, the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. And then let's skip on over to verses 23 and 24. It says, it says in verse 23, And when they, they came to Marah, they, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they, they were bitter. Therefore the, the name of it was called Marah, and, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, What, what shall we drink? Now, I, I, I want to go, go up, up. Let's, let's catch, catch 22, 22 also, because it's important to see 22. It says, So, so Moses brought Israel from, from the Red Sea, and they, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days, remember that, three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now I want, I want us to go to the last verse of this chapter, verse 27, and this is what it says. And they, they came, came to Elam, where were twelve, twelve wells of water and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Would, would you pray, pray with me? Brother Johnny, would you lead us in prayer? And David, and David, you may, may be seated. seated. This, this passage of Scripture starts out, out and, and it's really wild how it starts out. out. Imagine, if you would, you come to the Red Sea, and there you have a barrier between you and freedom. And on the other side, there's freedom. But on this side, you're getting ready to be captured again by the Egyptian soldiers, and you're getting ready to be taken back to Egypt, and you're going to be back in slavery. And so here you are, you're between the Egyptian army and then on one side, and in the Red Sea on the other. And God does something for the children of Israel that can be nothing short of miraculous. He splits the Red Sea. The Bible says literally that the, the, the sea split to the point that the, the folks uh, on, on one side of the sea began to walk and they walked on dry land till they got to the other side of the Red Sea and, and there they were on the other side and then God began to allow the sea to collapse back in on the Egyptian soldiers who had followed. The, 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 the tracks, tracks began to get loose, loose and all of a sudden the, the, the wagon wheels begin to sink and then all of a sudden here comes the water. And, and all of the, the Egyptian, Egyptian army was destroyed in that Red Sea. sea. And, and here the children of Israel and Moses are on the other side 
They, they now have freedom. freedom. They're, They're no, no longer captive. captive. They're, They're no, no longer in slavery. Man, Man, they're excited, right? right? So, so they, they begin, begin to have a celebration. No doubt, as, as we, we celebrate the 4th of July, July and, and as we do things over this, this weekend, weekend, maybe, maybe even, even now you've, you've already started all the things that you want to do to celebrate, to celebrate the 4th of July. July. Maybe, maybe you've, you've had a picnic. picnic. Maybe, maybe you've had, had a cookout. cookout. Maybe, maybe you've set, set off fireworks. Maybe, maybe you went to a fireworks display. Maybe you sat there and you went and watched the fireworks last night. Maybe... Uh, and you're, you're sitting, sitting there and you're thinking about, about other things, parades and all those things that go on during the 4th of July, July to, to celebrate this, this freedom, freedom that uh, our, our country has, this freedom of liberty. And we recognize that every 4th of July. July. By the way, just let, let you know, five years from now, now we'll, we'll be celebrating our 250th anniversary, anniversary of the 4th of July. July. Five years from now, 250 years. And, and so, so there's all these celebrations that are taking place, place even now about how exciting things are. Today, uh, I'm, I'm going to actually, actually take my kids. They've, they've never seen an anvil shoot. shoot. Now, for those of you that don't, don't know what happens on an anvil shoot, they, they take one anvil, and they turn, turn another anvil on, upside down on top of that anvil, they put gunpowder between the two, they light it, and, and it explodes and shoots that anvil way up in the air, about 150 feet in the air. Pretty neat little thing to do. My kids have never seen it, but we're going to go see that today. All of those things, celebration of the 4th of July, celebration of our country's freedom. But I want to ask you this. If you look around in our country today, do you see signs of trouble? Remember the song that we just heard? Do you see signs of trouble? Do you see signs of chaos on the horizon? Do you see signs of the church struggling? Do you, Do you see signs of our country's freedom in, in turmoil? And, and I would sit there and I would challenge you by saying that all the things which represent our country as far as liberties and justice for all are somewhat in question. You now question whether or not police should even be funded. You question now whether or not you're to say the Pledge of Allegiance or you're turn your back or take a knee. And, and all of those things, when, when I grew up, up, if you would have said any of those things during, my, uh, during the days that I grew up as a kid, kid you would have got smacked in the face if you chose to, to, to do the things that you're doing, doing today. If, if you, you were to sit there and be disrespectful to a police officer, it's, it's not, not the police officer, officer that would have grabbed you by the nap of the neck. neck. It would have been your mom or dad. And, and today, today, if you, you don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, that's acceptable. If you, you don't uh, stand for the National Anthem, that's, that's acceptable. But when, when I was growing up, if you didn't stand for it, you, you better be paralyzed. paralyzed. Otherwise, you're going to meet somebody that's going to sit there and ask you, why aren't you standing? And then that's going to be a different conversation. And it would have been a very rude conversation because people took pride not only in this country, but they took pride in what our flag and what our anthem and what other things represented. The liberty and justice for all meant something. But today, today we, we take it very callous and very casual. And, and what, what happened in the 250 years since we obtained, obtained these liberties and freedoms to the point, point now where we mock those liberties, liberties and freedoms? freedoms. You, you say, say well, Tim, I mean, man, man that's, that's 250, 250 years. years. That, uh, we're, we're not, not doing, doing too bad. bad. And I, I would somewhat disagree with that. that. I think that once, once you get exposure, exposure to those liberties and freedoms, you ought to treasure them every single day. And Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan used to make, make the statement, we're, we're one, one generation away from losing everything that we ever worked hard to get. Every, every generation has to fight for the liberties and freedoms that we have because it only takes one, one generation to let it slip away. And so, and so the question, question I'm going to ask you is this. In, in the, the midst, midst of our country, country we, we see, see those things, but what, what has happened in our, our churches? We, we take the liberties of coming to church and worshiping God, God very, very casually today. In, in, in fact, you can look around and you can see the numbers within our church. church. And, and I would, I would love, love to say this is just happening here at Child's Memorial. But, but unfortunately, as I, as I talk to other pastors, I'm finding this, this has become, become a major trend. trend. And, and you know what's made, made it worse now, now because we're on television? And don't get me wrong, I think that's great for those who are shut in, those who have 
issues that can't make it to church, but unfortunately we have made it too easy for folks who can come to church, who can get involved, who can participate, but we've made it so easy they stay at home rather than coming to God's house. And I'm going to challenge you, if you're listening today on, on television or on, on YouTube or whatever the case may be, and you're hearing this message, I want you to know that if you're feeling a little bit uneasy right now, that is God convicting you because you should be here. This, this is the place of worship. This, this is the place, place of gathering. And, and we, we as Christians should take that seriously. You know, you know what, what we discovered this past year? year? We, we discovered that, that the devil has run a test run to see how to shut down the church. And, and the church has helped him run it. We, we shut down. down. And, and then, then we decided now, now that we're coming back, back we're still going to stay at home. All, All those things causes us to look at the freedoms and liberties that we had in our country and now the freedoms and liberties we have in our church. And the problem is we are distancing ourselves from the very things that God says we as Christians should take hold of and claim. Now, I say that because as I read this passage of Scripture, these people were celebrating. And there was a time, by the way, that we celebrated the, the, the 4th of July in this country like no other place on earth celebrated anything else on earth. We celebrated because it meant something. Now it's very casual. These people, the children of Israel, they were celebrating the fact that God delivered them from the Egyptian army. They, they were celebrating the fact that they were no longer enslaved. They, they were celebrating the fact that God literally split a sea so they so could they go, go over on dry ground. ground. God, God literally gave them everything that they had asked for, the freedom, the provision, the, the safety, the security, and, and even, even conquered, conquered the enemy. And, and they were blessed with that. And so they began to sing and celebrate. Then, then we look over at, at verse 23 and 24, and we, and we find that three days later, they took, took three, three days and went out away from, from the sea, sea went three, three days, days journey, and, and lo and behold, they couldn't find water, and, and they began to murmur. murmur. Sound, Sound familiar? God, God gives us freedom, liberty, liberty blessings, blessings, have, have a, great a great place to worship, to worship have, have a great, great church, uh, has, has a great, great foundation, has, has Great, great leadership has, has I, mean, I mean, all, all the things, things that you would want, want in a church you find here at this place and at other places throughout our country, country and, and yet we, we see Christians, Christians falling off one, one right after the other, right after the other. Right after the, the question, question is this, are we like the children of Israel on the river this day, whereas they were in the days trying to flee the slavery, we're trying, trying to flee the devil, or are we? And, and I, I would sit there and I would say that this, this is a very, very negative sermon. And I would sit there and agree with you that this, this is a very negative way to approach things if it wasn't for the fact that I know the last part of this sermon. And this is the exciting part. And Johnny, you're going to love this. As I came in, I had a conversation with somebody. And during that conversation, there was this talk about how that it seems like in life, life we'll, we'll take one, one step forward with, with God and two, two steps back from, from God. You ever, you ever feel like that? You ever, you ever feel, feel like you take one, one step forward and only you get hit by the devil and you take two steps back? As, As I'm reading this story, story certainly the children of Israel would, would say, say that, yeah, yeah we, we took one step forward. forward. It was a great step. It was a wonderful step. step. We're on the other side of the Red, Red Sea. We're no longer enslaved. Everything's great. We, we took one step forward, but lo and behold, then, then we go three, three days without water and we start out in God. And, and so, so we, we took two steps, steps back. back. Right? Here's, Here's the great part of it. Look, Look at, at verse 27, 27 again. again. I want you to hold on to this and then I'm going to give you another passage of Scripture to mark and read later. But, but in verse 27, it says, And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and, and they encamped there by the waters. Where did that come from? And how did they make it there? They didn't get there by accident. God led them there. I want, I want you to know this morning that, that when we use the term one step forward, two steps back, what, what we should be saying is this. Every step we take along our journey is a step forward. And you say, Tim, what do you mean by that? If I take one step forward and it's a positive, and then I get knocked back two steps, I want you to know I learned from the first step, and then I also learn how to draw closer to God with the next two steps. 
These children of Israel learned to draw closer to God, not only with the first step, which saw them on the other side of the Red Sea. Not only did they learn from that, but guess what else? They also learned from the two steps they had to take backwards when they started murmuring. And God says, wait a minute, I'm still the God that provided for you at the Red Sea. Let me show you what I can do while you're in the wilderness. Make, Make sure, sure that, that you grow, grow in faith, even though, though you might, might feel like you took two, two, two steps, steps back. You, you need to understand this morning, God says it's for growth. And all those steps count towards, towards getting closer to Him. him. And what, what I found is, is as, as, as Miss Karen saying, that, that trouble that I face in my life, it, it is there for a purpose and a reason. God, God doesn't allow those things to happen because he's mad at me or he's mean towards me. me. God, God lets, lets that happen and it, it might be a learning experience to draw, draw me closer to him. And, and so, so as I take that one step forward and then have to take those two steps back, I've grown closer to God by three steps. And I will be positive towards that. I told you I was going to give you a passage of scripture. scripture. You write this down if you've got a pen and a piece of paper. I'll give you time to get that pen and paper together. But I want you to write this down. I want you to go home and I want you to read it. I want you to study it. I want you to grab hold of it. It is the great promise from God to every Christian, to every person here on this planet that accepts him as their Savior. You're going to read in this passage of scripture the promise that God has given you. And it is Psalms 139. Psalms 139. You, you read, read that passage of scripture, scripture because I'm, I'm going to tell you just a synopsis, but you're going to want to read, read it in detail. In, in, uh, the synopsis is this. It says that I am so wonderfully made that God knows everything about me. I can't hide from him. I can't avoid him. I can't miss him. God's that intimate with me and that involved in my life. God knows everything about me and everything that I do. God knows my deepest of parts in my heart. And he knows that, that when I sit, sit there and I stub my toe, that, that my heart's desire is really to be pleasing to him. him. And, and God, God says all along, all I'm helping, helping you do, the reason for your trouble in your life, the reason for those problems that, that you run into, the reason for some of the failures that you have along the way with these tests, all of those things are to draw you closer to me so that when you get there, there might be a place out there where you find that you can rest by the still waters in the shade of a tree, tree even, even though, though there, there may be desert, desert all the way around you. You, you think, think about, about that for a moment. moment. Being, Being in a desert, desert and now, now you have palm trees, and you literally have the oasis with water, water and you're, you're sitting, sitting there. there. You, you just, just disobeyed God. God. You, you just turned your back on God and murmured. murmured. You just, just questioned, questioned his power and authority. God, God had just saw you across the Red, Red Sea, and now, now you're, you're already murmuring three days, days out. And, and God says, even in the midst of that, I want, I want to keep, keep teaching you and showing you how to be closer to me. And, and then he guides them to a place that they, they can see truly what God wants for their life is, is the peace, the love, and the joy. Remember, Remember they're, they're on a journey, and they're going to the promised land. Remember, we're on a journey. We're here in a strange land. Our, our, our goal and our end is, is there in heaven, and we're living this, this life to reach, reach others for Christ and to be pleasing to him. him. This, this morning, I'm, I'm going to share, share with you, as, as I close, my thoughts on, on what, what I think is going on in this, this country, and, and I'm, I'm going to give you two scenarios that can play out. out. Number, Number one, we've got a scenario where our country, country is turning their back on God, and they're, they're going to turn bitter towards God, they're going to turn hard-hearted towards God, hard -hearted towards God and, and we're going to end up forcing God to abandon this country and the safety and securities that we have. Now, I want, I want you to pause on that and think, think about, about that for just a moment. We are, we are literally at a point in our country's history where we're, we're either going to do it God's way, way or we're, we're going to turn rebellious towards God, and God will have nothing to do with us. And that's, that's where we're at. Oh, and this, this is the part that I'm praying for, and I hope that every Christian in this room is praying for. I hope and pray that every Christian that's listening is praying for and working towards, and that is this. We fall on our knees and we humble ourselves before God. 
and, and we seek his, his face, and, and we pray and repent, and, and we, we say, God, we want to be restored to you. God, we took one step forward in our freedom. We've taken two steps back in our abandonment on the things, things that you've given us. us. And, and God, today, those things have drawn us closer to you. We, we ask for forgiveness that you might sustain us and, and give us the freedoms and liberties that you've always intended for us to have. God, lead us to the palm trees and still water so that we might live in, in peace. peace. And, and those, those are the two options, options that we have before us as a country. country. I'm, I'm going to tell you also, as a church, church we, we have those same two options. We can, we can live in our rebellious life and say, God, I want to do it my way. I want the conveniences for me. I want to do what I want to do. And we can sit there and we can stay at home. We can do those things. We can pretend that, that, that we're excited about doing worship, but we'll try and do it anyway, but the way that God tells us to do it. And we'll forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we can do that for a period of time. And eventually God will say, okay. I no, I no longer can use that, uh, that, that clock. clock. I, I can no, no longer use those, those folks because, because they turned hard-hearted and, and rebellious towards me. Or we, we can get on bended knees and say, God, it's time for a revival in our hearts. hearts. God, we, we believe that you're able to overcome the evils of this world. And Father, more importantly, we know that when your people come before you ready to worship and ready to pray, we, we, and we, we know, know that you are willing to not only meet us there, but to lead us in how to do it the right, right way. Folks, Folks I'm, I'm here to tell you, as, as a pastor, I somewhat, somewhat get excited, excited about that. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I believe with all of my heart when Christian people, and let's take the, the, the few that are here today, but the Christian people that are here this morning, when we choose to say, God, no longer will we follow after the easy comforts of this world and, and what, what the devil would entice us with. But God, we're going to choose to do it your way. We're going to choose to humble ourselves and be guided by you. When we choose to do that, that's when revival will break out, not only in this church, but I believe in this country as well. And our churches better be active in leading the way and in reaching to God and asking for his support, his guidance, and his mercy. I'm, I'm going to tell you, Brother, Brother Johnny, God, God did not give me a pulpit for this, this nation. I'm, I'm not standing up preaching to every church in our, our congregations throughout our country. But God, God gave me this church to, 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 to love and, and to care for and to, to, to try and do the best I could with, with to, 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 to preach the gospel. The gospel. And, and what God has told me in my heart, heart is this. While well, I may not be able to affect the world as a whole, I sure can preach what the truth is for our, our, our congregation here. And, and if we, we will accept what God gives to us, it can be contagious and it can spread. We did not become a nation of independence because everybody bought into it all at once. We became a nation of independence because a group of people got together and began to talk about a vision, vision that then, then spread to another group of people, that spread to another group of people, that spread to another group of people until you had 13 colonies willing to step out and claim their independence. It may, it may be the same in churches as well. Folks, we've got to do our part. We've got to be confessing our sins. And we've got to be living our lives in obedience to him. I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed and with your eyes closed. Right, right now, wherever you're, you're at, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. First off, if you're, you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, I want you to know something. I want, I want you to know that you're on the other side of the Red Sea. You're there in a place where ultimately time may run out. And you may spend an, uh, an everlasting existence separated from God. Or you can come and ask Jesus Christ into your life. And just as he split the Red Sea, also he has split hell's gates open with his son Jesus. To where that you don't have to be living in your sin any longer, but rather you can be saved through Christ Jesus, our Savior. And so this morning I would simply ask you, wherever you're at, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing, right now, if you know that you're lost, I'm going to ask you to pray here in just a moment. Asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to save you. 
After, After that, that I'm going to ask you to come and get alone with me so that we might just thank God for your salvation experience and God saving you this morning. Christian, isn't it time that we become the leaders of the world as Christians? Isn't it time that we step up and believe that God is able to draw us in and help us to succeed where it seems like we failed? This, this morning, I'm going to ask that you open your hearts, hearts up to him and humbly just confess your sins to him and ask God to lead us to, to a place of revival and a place of submissiveness to him. Whatever it is that God's leading you to do, would you do it this morning as Brother David comes to get a hymn ready? Right now, wherever you're at, would you join me in prayer? Father, I pray that this morning, if there's one here who's lost, that even, even now they might, might open their heart up to you and begin confessing, saying, God, I know, I know that I'm a sinner. I know, I know that I need a Savior, and I know that I need to be forgiven. So, Father, would you forgive me of my sins, and would you save me? Or for the Christian, that, Father, you might just touch their hearts even now to allow every person in this room to know that, Father, not only have you delivered us from the sins of this world and from the sins of the devil and from, from our sinful life and have set us free. But, but God, God, you're also able to sustain us and guide us as, as we travel this wilderness called earth. So, so God, we offer ourselves, ourselves up that you might use us in any way that you see fit. God, God, we ask that you might make us ready to share the gospel message with the lost and dying world. Help, Help us to be what you want us to be. Father, Father, I pray, I pray all these things and, and for all the folks in this room to do what you lay upon their heart to do. For it's in your name we pray. And with heads bowed and with eyes closed, as Brother David sings, would you come? And we, we want to pray for that as well. But if you'll join me, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll dismiss. 